Hi, everyone. This is the voice behind the noise. And I am Myron. After the outbreak of the Russia Ukraine conflict, the United States, NATO, Japan, and other countries have announced severe sanctions against Russia. With the severe sanctions imposed on Russia by the United States and Europe, the volatility of the global capital market has increased, the prices of crude oil, natural gas, electrolytic aluminum, and other commodities have risen sharply, the European and American stock markets have fallen sharply and the Russian ruble has depreciated sharply against the US dollar. Among them, in terms of Russia's economy, in terms of foreign exchange, Europe and the United States and other countries have frozen Russia's gold and foreign exchange reserves of nearly 300 billion US dollars, accounting for half of Russia's total foreign exchange reserves. Due to the economic blockade abroad, Russia is unable to trade with the world, domestic inflation is serious, and the ruble has depreciated significantly. Many people have begun to go shopping on the streets to prevent money from becoming more and more worthless in their hands. While Russia is steadily eliminating Ukrainian resistance, its own economic strength is also rapidly regressing. I am afraid that during this period of time, Russia's economic strength has regressed for nearly 10 years. Of course, as the other side of the war, Ukraine has also suffered serious damage, both economically and in terms of the people. I also began to wonder, what did Russia and Ukraine lose in this war? And what losses has this Russia-Ukraine conflict brought to the world? In terms of Russian finance, since the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine dispute, the reaction of the financial market has been quite unfavorable to Russia. The United States quickly announced that it would freeze all Russian assets in the United States and proposed a series of sanctions that would limit Russia's ability to trade in dollars, euros, pounds and yen, while about 80% of Russia's foreign exchange transactions and 50% of its trade volume were due it in US dollars. Among them, the swift sanctions escalated the financial war. On February 27, the third day after the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine dispute, the United States and the European Union reached an agreement and announced that some Russian banks would be excluded from the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication SWIFT, system. After SWIFT kicked out Russia, Russian society experienced a series of blows such as the stock market crash, the devaluation of the ruble, and the trade shock. The market value of Russia's largest spur bank fell from $110 billion to $243 million, shrinking 500 times. Shares in Rosneft, the world's largest publicly traded oil company, have fallen 92% over the past year. In the bond market, Gazprom's $1.3 billion investment-grade bond due in March 2022 has fallen to 60% of its face value while the market price of Gazprom's 450 million Swiss franc notes due in 2023 is even lower to 22% of face value. The United States, the European Union, and the United Kingdom have also frozen assets of major Russian banks, key enterprises and entities, and elite individuals at the top. In terms of the lives of the Russian people, a series of multinational companies announced their departure from the Russian market, involving logistics, movies, digital equipment, clothing, e-commerce and other industries. Various commercial companies took off the mask of commercial neutrality and followed the same position of Western politicians, and the sanctions showed a domino effect. First, mainstream credit card brands prohibit cross-border use by local Russian cardholders. Russian customers will not be able to use their debit and credit cards abroad, and customers will not be able to initiate online payments to companies registered in sanctioned countries. Then there are the most commonly used mobile payment methods for the public, Apple Pay and Google Pay. The impact of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis on Ukraine. On the Ukrainian side, on March 18, local time, a joint investigation report released by the International Organization for Migration showed that during the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, nearly 6.5 million people had been displaced in Ukraine, and more than 3.2 million people had fled from Ukraine, becoming the one of the biggest immigration crises since World War II. The report also noted that more than 12 million people are estimated to be unable to leave Ukraine due to security risks or road congestion. The United Nations said large numbers of displaced people were forced to take refuge in overcrowded places with limited sanitation facilities, limited medical services, and could exacerbate the spread of the new coronavirus, HIV, and tuberculosis in Ukraine. Then, what impact will the Russian-Ukrainian conflict have on the world economy and finance? Recently, the well-known business information service organization, Dunn and Bradstreet of the United States released a report that the international domino effect of the Ukraine crisis has begun to appear. According to the report, 374,000 companies worldwide now rely on Russian suppliers, 90% of which are located in the United States, and 241,000 companies rely on Ukrainian suppliers, 93% of which are located in the United States. 
The report points out that companies around the world are now continuing to grapple with the inflation of the new crown pandemic and the rise in commodity prices caused by supply chain disruptions, the latter of which is clearly the direct cause of today's Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Even now, it looks like conditions for thousands of businesses around the world could get worse in the future. Analysts generally agree that the fallout from the Ukraine crisis could leave the world facing a prolonged reduction in energy supplies, potentially affecting global food supplies and security. According to CCTV News reports, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, said a few days ago that in the long run, the Ukraine crisis may fundamentally change the global economic and geopolitical order. In the longer term, the Ukraine crisis could lead to a shift in energy trade, reconfiguration of supply chains and fragmentation of payment networks, IMF officials noted. And prompting countries to reconsider their holdings of foreign exchange reserves would fundamentally alter the global economic and geopolitical order, further increasing the risk of global economic fragmentation, especially in trade and technology. What are the implications of the Ukraine-Russia conflict to China? The financial sanctions suffered by Russia are all-round encirclement and looting from the country to the enterprise, from the enterprise to the individual. If you don't want to be led by the West like Russia, you need to be self-reliant. Russia has been interrupted by mainstream payment methods. If there is no alternative solution in a short period of time, it will have a great negative impact on society, such as bank runs, decline in consumption, depreciation of local currency and other financial hazards, which will affect the country's economic foundation. In China, whether it is a bank card brand or a mainstream third-party payment, local institutions in China are the mainstream platforms for users. China has experienced two decades of development from electronic payment to digital payment. From Russia's sanctions against China by the Western world, it is already clear that in addition to the three weapons of war commonly used by the United States, including financial warfare, technological warfare, and military warfare, there will be another digital warfare. Digitization has become ubiquitous. Ten years ago, digitization was a part of life, and ten years later, humans have become part of digitization. In short, China needs to be vigilant at all times. China should make full use of the development demands of the domestic digital transformation trend, make good use of digital economy platforms including Alipay and WeChat, continue to strengthen the planning and construction of financial technology, and continuously strengthen the strategic barriers to prevent financial blackmail. At the same time, China should also take the initiative and should continue to encourage the orderly development of financial technology, serving economic development internally and making greater contributions to participating in global competition externally. The road of RMB internationalization will continue. Alipay and WeChat, as the two most commonly used mobile payment tools for Chinese people, must continue to strengthen the international layout so that Chinese people can move freely in the global market and connect overseas and domestic. International Multilateral Society Security cannot depend on outsiders, and only continuous self-development can bring about long-term strategic stability. Okay, that's all for today, see you in the next video. Okay, that's all for today, see you in the next video.